Hey, what's up fellow reefers? So today I wanna to do a video about fish quarantine. More specifically, the quarantine that we do here at our shop. Now, for those of you who don't know, I work for a company called Tanknitions. Now we started off as an aquarium service company, but we slowly transitioned to having our own store and also being a fully quarantined fish shop. And eventually we're gonna do corals too, but right now we're focusing on the fish. So I get a lot of people asking me in the comments to kind of show what we do as far as our quarantine procedures here. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our 10 gallon setups and I'm gonna kind of show you our procedure when dealing with fish when they first come in and how we treat them and um, the length of period of time we treat them for. So let's go ahead and start right now. So we use the copper power, fenbendazole as a dewormer, prazi, and also chlorchlorine phosphate. All right, so we started this quarantine shop because there really is no one else doing this in South Florida at this level. And fish come in with tons of diseases and parasites. And if you don't exclude these before they get into your aquarium, your aquarium is never gonna be as successful as you want it to be. And these animals are gonna suffer. So that's why we do everything that we can here to make sure that our fish are healthy and clean. So here's an example of a 10 gallon aquarium that we have here. So this one has a bunch of blue-green chromis and then the an antheus and it's running off a single sponge filter. That sponge filter is running off this airline tubing which goes all the way up to the ceiling and to a compressor. Now if you notice we have glass tops on here. That's to keep the tank sealed. Why do we do that? It's because there's a tank to the right and to the left of it. Now the thought behind that is we're trying to prevent cross-contamination with having this lid on here. This is a sealed lid. It is sealed airtight with a custom cutout glass top and any area where there could be water or air to leak out of, we sealed with Vaseline all around the edges. Now the airline tubing goes in, it's blowing and any air that comes out is going out through this exhaust system, which we custom made. It's PVC, it comes out through here. Inside here is a bunch of filter media and then we drilled holes in here to let out whatever air, but anything that, any water or any, uh, anything big will get caught up in that filtration floss. The reason why we seal every tank in our shop is to prevent water from here spilling somehow into this tank, into that tank, and et cetera. So we can isolate whatever issues going on to the one tank. We've we custom made these glass tops, we have them custom made, and then we drilled holes in them to be able to allow ourselves airline tubing, uh, exhaust and then a little feeding port so that was all custom done now one would say this seems like a lot of trouble having a fish store and then having each system basically its own little filtration unit that seems like a lot of work well let me explain it most fish stores don't do this most fish stores have a bunch of tanks and then they have a big filtration system and then all of your tanks are running off that single filtration system that's how we see it most places so let me address the reasoning behind our system. If these chromis and antheas came in on a different date than these chromis and antheas, say these guys have been here longer and these guys have been, these guys just got here, these guys might have already been good. They went through their quarantine. But then if we add these fish to the system with just one filtration, this whole area would be contaminated. If there's something on this fish, it will go through the filtration and hit every single fish in the whole system. But even if we have a good quarantine on these fish, and then you would say, well, you just have two different areas. You have uh, an area on one filtration system where fish that have already gone through their quarantine are good will be on one side, and then the, the newcomers are on a different system. Well, a lot of times, even though you do the two, four week quarantine, you could have a breakdown of quarantine. So we could think we're good right here with these chromis, and these guys came in on the same date and then we're good. But then we start to notice that this fish is looking a little sick. Instead of having to do the quarantine, redo the quarantine on a bunch of fish, we just have to do the quarantine just on these guys, just on this one tank. So these guys have made it, they're showing no signs and et cetera, all the way down the line. We don't have to do all of that work to re-quarantine all those fish. We can isolate the problem to just this tank. Let me say this, most fish stores do not quarantine their fish. They might say we're running copper through the, the water at all times, we're running prosy or whatever medications we treat our fish, right? They might say that and that's fine, 
but that's not quarantine. That could be conditioned, but that's not quarantine. All they're doing is giving enough meds in the water to keep the whatever parasite or cilia or infection suppressed. It does not mean the fish is good. What I mean by that is if you want this Valentini puffer right here, he's good, he's healthy, right? No signs of anything. But then the fish store just gets a brand new order and in that order, they get this beautiful hawkfish. That hawkfish just got in. He hasn't had time to be in this aquarium to let that copper really take effect on anything that might be troubling him. So that water on the same filtration system just infected this guy and it's no longer a quarantine fish. Most fish stores are constantly getting inventory in every single week. And sometimes they're getting it multiple times within the same week. That means all those fish that have been in that store that supposedly have been in medicine or copper or whatever they put in their aquariums are constantly being exposed at least a couple of times a week to new fish and new diseases and new parasites. So that's not a true quarantine because they, they are never really isolated. Any new fish that comes in, comes in goes into its own tank and it's completely away from every other fish. So it, there is no, once that fish goes through quarantine, he's not getting reinfected with any new fish. That's a completely separate area and that's a completely separate tank. So let's get into our treatment of the fish once they're in our quarantine system. So we have painter's tape right here. I just scribbled some stuff on there to keep, help me keep track. 12-1. Um, 12-1 was the date that these fish um, first started their medications when the quarantine officially started. When medicines went into the tank, that's when I wrote the date down. TPA, TPA is just our way of letting everybody know that this tank is going to be treated with copper. Um, fish, fish like Anthias, Chromis, some tangs, uh, some wrasse, and I'm sure there's some other fish I'm, I'm, I'm missing, but the, these are the fish that are gonna be treated with copper that cannot do chloroquine phosphate. So that's what TPA stands for. So day one, we get copper up to 1.0. Day one, we do half a dose of copper, so that brings us to one. And then we add Metro, a small a batch of Metro, and Prazi. Day two, we get copper all the way up to 2.0. Day three, we increase the metro. Every other day we increase metro until we get to day eight. And then we do a 25% water change. So any uneaten food that's on the bottom from feeding them, we get all that out, kind of refresh the tank. And then we will test again for copper levels and, and adjust the copper levels. Uh, once we refill it, top it back off, make sure we're at 2.0 again. Day nine, another dose of Prozzi. And then every other day again, it's, it's, it's metro. And then on day 15 is a tank transfer. Tank transfer means we break this whole tank down. Everything comes off. This unhooks here. We go in the back, we sterilize that. We take the top off, that gets washed and sterilized. The, t the tank gets drained, the fish get put in acclimation buckets. This whole thing comes out and we take it in the back and we sterilize everything. And then we get it ready for the next batch, batch of fish. Then those fish would go into a new tank and it would start, we'd still have the start date when we started the medicine. And then we'd have a brand new one through uh, 14 and that would keep us track that that next two weeks. So we already did two weeks of the medication. The next two weeks would be just an observation period. This is a very critical period in the quarantine because you need to be looking at your fish every single day for any signs of uh, any infection or parasite. Because a lot of times that two week uh, two weeks of medication does not kill everything that's on the fish. Sometimes you might have a a, a missed quarantine, something might have happened. So you have to be sure to make sure these fish are good for the full 14 days if they're showing no signs. If they do sh show a sign, it goes back to starting completely over and then we go back to the copper and the process and all that. In the two week um, period of observation, there is no copper in the water and we're just basically checking the fish every day for any signs and just counting down till they hit that two week mark. Just One more thing I wanna add about LFS is if you, do see a fish that's not on say this system is infected this system is good and they're trying to sell you the fish and saying well yeah this this fish is sick you know what you're right um, but this system is a completely different system and it's not on the same filtration you see that so we're good right no 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 so what happens in fish stores the reason why that's such a problem of having a good system and a bad system is if I'm using a net to catch a fish out of here I'm most likely using that net to catch a fish out of here. 
most fish stores just have their nets hanging up right here and they're just using it for every other tank. A drop of water from right here gets dipped into here. Anybody in the restaurant business knows that's cross-contamination. Now you just infected all these tanks. It literally takes a drop of water to infect a tank. It doesn't take much. Every single one of our tank has its own feeding port, which I, I'll unscrew when it's time to feed. This way, this one's still closed, even though this one's open, it's still closed. So we're minimizing that contact that we're having. Each system has its own little specimen cup, own little syringe, and then we feed. And then this goes in the back when we're done and it gets dumped in a sanitation bucket and all that's clean. Same thing goes with our nets. As soon as the net is used for one tank, it is thrown in the sanitation bucket not to be used again until it's fully sanitized. Now, the other medication system that we use is uh, we call TPF. That just says any fish that's able to use chloroquine phosphate or might have a sensitivity to copper will do chloroquine phosphate. So same deal, we have our, elect our, our painter's tape and um, we mark down the days that they've been in the quarantine. Same thing as a two week uh, uh, period. And you see, we have some really cute jawfish right there. Uh, but we do the chloroquine phosphate. First day, we do the full dose and then we slowly uh, do one tenth of a dose of chloroquine phosphate because it does dissipate. Day eight, we do prosy. And it's basically the same deal. Break down the tank, sanitize, goes into a brand new uh, cycled aquarium. Here is how it's written on our board right here, our TPA, you have your one through 15 and then your observation period. You can see where we have marked M for Metro, P for Prozzi, uh, T for test. And then we have it all marked up here so it's easy to see. TPF, you can see the chloroquine phosphate and then one tenth dose of chloroquine phosphate continuing those 12 days and then tank transfer on the 12th day. We also have fish here in our 29 gallon tanks. Um, we just did a huge breakdown on these tanks, so they're a little messy right now, but we do have some uh, fish in 29 gallon tanks, bigger fish like your, even got a needle nose fish right there. See that little guy? It's awesome. And then another 29 gallon tank right here with some more antheus and some ras, pintail fairy ras, awesome fish. Um, we like to give the wrasse uh, a little bit more swimming room. There was a lot more of these fish, but we just did a, a bit of a tank transfer. So, um, and then it's got two sponge filters on here. Now, anyone who says, well, it's just sponge filter, there's not a lot of water movement. Those things are cranking and the water's plenty oxygenated for these guys. I like the sponge filters personally. There's a lot of surface area for good beneficial bacteria. Now, one thing I want to address, there was somebody in the comments that was upset that we did not have any sand or substrate for the jawfish. And trust me, I understand where you're coming from. I appreciate the comment. The reason why we do not have any sand in here or any like live rock or anything like that is because it does interfere with the levels of the medication. The chloroquine phosphate that we use and the copper are both affected by the amount of bacteria that's in the aquarium and it would just cause too much fluctuation. We already, with the chloroquine phosphate, we add one tenth of a dose every single day. Things are kind of dialed in. So it would just cause too much fluctuations. And the most important thing is to keep the levels of medication stable. So we make sure that it's at therapeutic level and that we're treating any type of disease that these fish might have. But were we not, they're only in the system for usually about a month. They have PVC in there. They have sponge filters that they love to kind of hide under. They're perfectly happy, they're eating great, they are active, and more importantly, they're getting their medications so that they can be healthy and be ready to go into a customer's tank to live out the rest of their, their days. And the way you can tell that they're happy is because every time I go by the tank, they're coming out to try to see, is it time for food yet? Now, this is our setup at the store. Yours at home might be different. It's different being in a store environment where there's multiple tanks and then just having a tank at your house. One thing I want to add is we're down, we're located in South Florida. There is no uh, aquarium store, no LFS that is doing full quarantine like we're doing. So this is kind of new territory here and there is no blueprint to follow. So we've been kind of slowly learning this as we go along and, and kind of like hitting bumps in the road and adjusting and trying to make things as streamlined as possible. But more importantly, really trying to get the success rate of, of and survival rate of these fish to you know, near perfect numbers. As if you couldn't tell here at Tank Nations, we really take quarantine seriously. It's the whole reason why we even decided to do this. We, we just felt like working in fish stores for so long that 
no, we, we saw the amount of fish death that was happening. And not only that, we saw a bunch of people that were so excited to get into the hobby and were uh, sold a bad fish and spent a bunch of money, uh, you know, get, doing their dream tank. And then they, get that, they got that one bad fish and they got a disease in their tank and it wiped out their whole system. And, you know, they were heartbroken and they just left the hobby for good. So that really inspired us to kind of take a step back and, you know, think there's got to be a better way. And um, we got to be able to do quarantine on a large scale. So if you're watching this video, uh, chances are you already have your own quarantine set up and you're just curious as to what ours is, or you're thinking about, do I really need to quarantine fish? Yes, absolutely you should quarantine your fish. Every single fish that you get should be quarantined. Fish are living creatures, they are our pets. They're not just something to look at. If you were to, if you have a cat at home or a dog at home, you wouldn't just go off the street and pick up a stray dog or a cat because that could give the pet at home a disease. It's the same thing with fish. They, just like cats and dogs need to get vaccinations and shots and be treated, fish need the same thing. Now, let me go over some of the reasons people say do not quarantine. I think one of the ones I heard when I first got into the hobby that um, I think about now and it's just crazy, is that if your tank is healthy and mature enough, that you don't need a quarantine because the tank will take care of itself. It's a little ecosystem, it'll all balance out. That is nonsense. Anybody who knows, if you go to the store and get a fish with marine velvet and you put it in your tank, it's gonna kill every single fish in your aquarium. Everything is going to die. There's nothing that tank can do that's going to make that any different. Also, fish have natural immunities to these things and um, if they're healthy, they can fight off any type of infection. That's nonsense. They have natural immunity to a certain extent. When they're in the ocean, these diseases are out there. That is true. But they're in such smaller amounts. The ocean is vast. If that parasite uh, come, you know, is, is looking for a fish, it's got a lot of ground to cover before it finds a fish. And when it does find that fish, chances of that fish being reinfected are, are, are slim. It has a chance to recover. The problem is when we have small tanks, that parasite only has so far to swim to, to latch onto a fish and that fish doesn't get time to recover. It's constantly being hit by that parasite over and over and over again until eventually it dies. Oh, but quarantine's incredibly stressful on the fish and medications aren't good for them. It shortens their lifespan. Just keep them under observation and you can make adjustments. Again, not all fish show signs. A lot of fish are carriers of a disease. Just like some people um, can get a flu and not show symptoms, but they can still carry the disease and you might look at that fish and it might be fine, but once it gets in your tank, it could spread it to other fish. Now you're putting yourself in a position where you're taking a huge chance in killing your other fish in the aquarium. We've treated and quarantined plenty of fish. They've all been fine. They're all doing healthy once they get into their final home. Uh, I, I don't see anything, any evidence from what we've been doing to back up that quarantine so stressful on the fish or that it's affecting its lifespan. It's just not from what we've been seeing. It just hasn't been that. And then lastly, well, I get my fish from a quality fish store. I trust them. Uh, they're always clean. It's a clean fish store and their fish are always healthy and they look great. Well, let's be honest. I worked in a fish store. It is a business. The object is to get a product in and get it out as soon as possible because you don't want to be sitting on money. You're going to get rid of every dead fish that you can as quickly as possible because you don't want to show that to the customers. There will be medications in the system most likely. Even We'll even do a formalin dip or some type of uh, Paragar dip when the fish first come in. But those are all half measures. Those aren't full quarantine. There's still things that are gonna slip through the cracks because there's constantly new inventory coming in. There's cross-contamination. We talked about that. We are not only a quarantine shop that sells fish, we also have service routes, so we have customers. We cannot have them get a sick fish because we cannot have our customers lose their fish and lose their aquariums. We would be out of business real quick. Fish stores are businesses. They never promise full quarantine. They might say conditioned or something like that. They might tell you they're running meds, but at the end of the day, it's up to us. It's totally worth getting a quarantine tank and doing it yourself. If not, we will be selling online relatively soon from our shop once we get everything set up to where we want it we'll, we we will be doing um, online selling so we're really excited about that in the future of tank missions when it comes to selling quarantine fish all right guys i know this was a longer video i'm sorry i went on a tangent there but like i said we're really passionate here about quarantine fish and it just it frustrates me because when people kind of downplay it because i've worked in this business for a long time and i've seen fish mortality 
and it's when you see it on a regular basis it's such a waste where these are beautiful creatures that are taken out of the wild and um it's just it's just nonsense to not do everything we can to try to provide them with a healthy environment they are pets just like cats and dogs and any other animal thank you guys so much for watching i would love to hear about your quarantine setups at home any thoughts you guys want to add to the comments i'd appreciate it there's a lot of people that are on the fence about quarantine if you put it in the comments maybe you could convince them one way or another uh to be able to do it themselves. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.